Hello there, and welcome to this week's episode of Mondays with Matthew. Well, it's been just over seven weeks since the COVID-19 outbreak led the first shelter-in-place order being made. And since that first proclamation, over 30% of our nation's businesses have shuttered. 80 million Americans have been told to stay at home, and with those businesses closing, over 33 million workers have filed for new unemployment benefits. Well, as we're now almost two months into this profound economic contraction, I thought it would be a good time to take a closer look at the job market and share my forecast for the rest of this year, because jobs and job growth are very important when it comes to the vitality of the country's housing market. But I must start out by saying that uh, the outlook is still pretty hazy, and my forecasts do rely very heavily on two specific factors. First, that we don't see a second wave of infections across the country that, in essence, forces another nationwide shutdown. And second, well, that's the consumers. And as they re-emerge from their homes and into the, the bright light of day again, are they going to get back to doing what they do best? And that's spending money. So with those disclaimers made, let's take a look at some numbers. Here's a baseline chart that shows monthly job growth. And you'll see that up until March, the country was adding jobs at a pretty healthy pace with around 178,000 new jobs created every month last year, and an average of just over 244,000 jobs per month in the first two months of this year. With the pandemic hitting in mid-March and businesses obviously started to close, well, in that month, the country lost 870,000 jobs in just one month. That alone is a remarkable number, but we were just getting started with the real effects of COVID-19 not being felt until April, when the country saw employment levels drop by a massive 20 and a half million. Now this number is truly unprecedented, so let me put it in some kind of context. Well, to do so, I dug deep into the Labor Department's historical data set, and the biggest monthly drop in US employment that I could find was way back in the fall of 1948, when employers let go of a mere 838,000 workers. Now that's looking backwards, so what about looking forwards? Well, if the country starts to reopen in June, and if we are essentially fully open for business by the end of July, this is how I see employment numbers moving. This chart shows the average number of monthly jobs gained or lost during a quarter, and the numbers go back to the start of last year and also my forecast for the rest of this year. The job losses seen in March, well, they turned growth negative for the first quarter, obviously, but it's during the second quarter when we will feel the full impact of COVID-19, with average job losses of around 8.4 million every month this quarter. But as we move further into the summer months, and the country reopens for business, I do expect to see workers return to their jobs, and this will boost total employment by an average of just short of 470,000 jobs per month in the third quarter, and another roughly 700,000 jobs per month in the final quarter of the year. The big unknown, obviously, is not whether COVID-19 will return this winter. I think that is indisputable but what effect it will have. And this will be driven by whether we have a vaccine or an inoculation by then. Well, I, I'm an economist, I'm not an epidemiologist, so I can't really opine on that particular topic. However, according to the World Health Organization, there are at least 105 companies across the planet who are working on treatments. So there is reason to be hopeful that new infections, if they do come back in the winter, will not be bad enough, and at least not bad enough to shut the country down again completely. We've talked about the headline employment numbers, and I think it's also important to look at the makeup of job losses, as this is really quite telling. 
Regular followers of mine may remember me saying that job losses are mainly focused on the leisure and hospitality and the retail sectors of the economy, and this is supported by the data. Over the past two months, leisure and hospitality, which includes hotels, bars, restaurants and the like, well, they have collectively shed over seven and a half million jobs. And the retail sector, well, that sector's lost just over two million jobs. Now, that is very significant. Why? Well, these two sectors alone account for just about half of all job losses. But uh, there's no doubt other sectors are also being hit. Look at healthcare. Well, that sector has lost just to get over 2 million jobs alone. Now, this might be counterintuitive given the current uh, climate, certainly from a hospital and medical standpoint, but the job losses are mostly because of dentists and other general doctor's offices having been considered non-essential and therefore forced to close. Also of note, I'll take a look at the professional and business service sector numbers significant job losses there too. And uh, that's being led actually unsurprisingly by contraction in people working in travel agencies and also other general employment agencies. No big surprises there. Now, given the makeup of jobs that have been lost, not surprising to see uh, that the pandemic has hit the rental housing market far harder than the ownership market as a significant number of job losses are in lower paying positions. Now, this theory well, is also supported by unemployment numbers. The unemployment rate for workers with a high school diploma alone, well, that came in in April at just over 17%. While the unemployment rate for college graduates, well, that was high, but it was just under 8.5%. Well, this again supports the theory that job losses have been centered around lower income jobs. Well, now we're talking about unemployment rates, let's take a look at where we are and where I think we will end up by year's end. Now, as you can see, the April unemployment rate was a really terrible 14.7%. And I'm afraid that it will rise more over the next two months before starting to fall. Part of the reason I anticipate that we'll see jobs return and the unemployment rate pull back quite significantly is that 88% of new unemployment claims in April were from people who were defined as being temporarily laid off. Now that suggests they will return to their jobs at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later. But you'll also see from my forecast that even as jobs return and the unemployment rate drops, we'll not see uh, levels anything like those that we saw back in February when the unemployment rate was around 3.5%. The reason for this is that even as businesses reopen, it's quite likely they may not need the same number of workers as they had before COVID-19 struck. And this will leave some workers to have to find different jobs. And I also believe that hotels, restaurants and bars will feel this impact more than any other sector. Hotels will likely need fewer workers, at least until such times as businesses and households decide that they are going to travel again. And as for bars and restaurants, well, when they do reopen, social distancing protocols will likely mean fewer tables therefore requiring fewer workers. And sadly, with the significant financial hit that bars and restaurants have already taken, it's quite likely that many may never be able to open their doors again. And there you have it. It's clear that we are going through a remarkable trough right now, but my glass remains half full. I would tell all of you to hang in there for another couple of months and all things being equal, you'll see the second half of 2020 as being considerably better than the first. I hope that you found today's comments of interest. As always, if you have any questions or thoughts about this topic, I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, take care out there, and I look forward to visiting with you again next week.